Uh, today is July 5th, 2023. Fifth date of seven days retreat. We were explaining discerning mind and matter in sensory context. Sensory content. The process of walking can be observed as the stepping on each foot. Stepping, stepping. On into pass as lifting and moving on in three parts as a lifting, moving and freezing. A series of intentions precede the physical lifting as the foot separates from the ground. In moving, the foot becomes light. And following this, there is tension as the foot is placed on the ground. In lifting, there is the physical process of lifting and the knowing of the lifting occurring. Lifting, moving, and embracing involve mental and physical phenomena. And to see this, one must begin aware of the lifting process at its inception. Observe the physical process and the intention preceding it. In the lifting process, there is no individual person or an I. There is no individual person or an I. In moving, what moves is the physical aspect, and there is an intention preceding it. There is no personality in the process. In the physical process of movement, we can observe a pushing from the back of the foot or a pulling at the front. Whatever our main intention, a physical movement follows. In placing, there is an intention to place the foot on the ground, followed by the placing, the foot going downwards and becoming heavy as it is placed on the ground. The hardness, softness, heaviness, or lightness in each step is observed. Even if knowledge near not hasn't developed yet, the mind doesn't wander and stays on the lifting, moving, or placing. In this way, come to know the true nature of mental and physical phenomena in bodily department and in each posture. Yet, First, we might come to know only the form of the lake, its shape or the positioning of the legs. As knowledge develops, as knowledge develops, we come to know the true nature of mental and physical phenomena.
three kinds of feelings. Feelings with an uh, three fold pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling. A yogi may experience a pleasant feeling when the body contests something soft and gentle or discomfort or pain. As the body contests something sharp or hot, contact with extreme heat or cold causes a discomfort. But when the wind blows or a fun calculates, uh, circulates, there is a coolness, extreme stiffness of feet sore, but stretching out can be relaxing and pleasant. There is also a neutral feeling, but it is difficult to become aware of natural feeling at the beginning. It is difficult to become aware of natural feeling at the beginning. When observed presently arising feelings, we are free from lava and dosa at the moment. There is no anger or aversion dosa towards unpleasant feeling, nor is there craving lava towards pleasant feeling. Observing feelings is uh, contemplating on presently arising feelings. Vedana Nubhasana. Vedana, Vedana Nubhasi, we are ready. Feelings must be observed by noting them as they arise by applying a level such a pleasant, pleasant, or pain, pain, etc. Uh, next, we will discuss Vedana defined as feeling. Vedana is not necessarily pain, but pain is the most prominent. So some people call it pain, but actually Vedana simply means feeling. It could be a pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and so forth. It is inevitable for any yogi or meditator to encounter Bhairana and especially the, the unpleasant ones. Although it may sometimes be seen as a difficulty or hindrance, hindrance difficulty or hindrance. Pain can also be seen as an opportunity and it requires strenuous effort or strong effort, strong effort to know that diligently and mindfully 
On the other hand, if it is a pleasant sensation, you can also get a carry away. So you should make a short train resolution when you encounter such sensations, especially pain. That is a really a diligent effort. Diligent effort. This is the tax and duty of the meditator to be able to follow the progress and regression of the sensation, whether it is pain or something pleasant. Consider pain, whether it is a throbbing pain, a sharp pain, and is cruciating pain or a very, very pain or a cramp. The yogi is a duty is to focus, to note it as and when, where and how it begins. As it progresses, the intensity will probably increase. It may even migrate to different parts of your body. And finally, it will vanish or become extinguished. The best thing you can do is to note every step of its advance and retreat. Advance and retreat. You must not run away from these sensations. You must not run away from these sensations. If it is a painful sensation in the leg or in the back or on the neck, you tend to suppress it by changing position or posture. If it is a pain in your leg, you move your leg up and down. If it is pain on your neck, you move your neck. Of course, the pain or the sens sensation will probably go away. But this is another way to do it. The way to do it is endure and note as it begins, it would surely go away and by when that Vedana has gone, you are Vedana, noting is finished and you go back to your object. Do not try to change your posture in order to react to your sensation. Especially pain. Do not try to change your posture in order to react to your sensation, especially pain. You must endure it and note it carefully as it progresses or regresses from beginning to end.
Skaraji said, Vedana can be seen in a positive way as the key to the door of Nibbana. Vedana Nibbham who women to go about Skaraji said, no? Dayan Vedana can be seen as a positive way as the key to the door of Nibbana. It can also be seen as one of your best friends in your meditation. Yeah, I told them, we don't It can also be seen as one of your best friends in your meditation. It can lead to insight knowledge. So, when you encounter any feeling, it should be pursued to its end, and it banishes. For veganas, especially if the feeling is a painful one, it would likely be the solid, bulky kind of sensation where you cannot seem to overcome. However, in reality, if you focus your mind on it, if you are noting and concentration become intense, the fame will subside, it will be extinguished. So it is more like a drop of water in a pond. As the river does not last, repair. Mm. So the Vedana will not last long as the river does not last. So the Vedana will not last long. Three ways to note feeling of oh, Vedana. There are three ways to note the feeling, especially if it is unpleasant. The, the first method is the one just described. You face head on whatever feeling that arises, even if it is a painful sensation. You confront directly the Vedana of feeling with intense concentration on it and keep your mind focused on it and enveloping it with your mental consciousness. Mental consciousness. The Vedana is sure to subside and vanish. This is a shortest way of overcoming and transcending that feelings, that feeling. Then you go back to your primary object. This requires a lot of mental strength, stimulus, not, and even physical strength. However, if the Vedana is very strong and intense, intense and especially painful, you feel you can no longer endure it. In this case, 
takes your mind off that particular feeling and go back to another object. Probably your primary object, the rising, falling, or the touching sensations. By doing so, your mind shifted away from the Bodhana, where feel a bit of relief from the intensity of the pain. After some time, when you have regained your strength mentally and physically, you go back and note the pain. If the Vedana is still there, tackle it again with intensity, and maybe you can conquer it at the point. If not, you go back to your primary object and forget about the Vedana for a while and then go back again and again. This is the method in which we have we have to return, retreat and return, retreat and return. It may take a long while to overcome the Vedana. It may take a long while to overcome the Vedana. Mm. Last one, the third method is not advisable for ordinary heavy individuals. It is not intensive noting, just a softly, softly approach in which you encounter a sensation and just came the surface surface and know it as it is occurring and then lightly note so that the intensity would not increase you will not experience the understanding and comprehension of the vedana itself it is only advisable for those who are trying to get a calmness of mind. Trying to get a calmness of mind. Why being ill, physically exhausted or mentally, physically exhausted or mentally exhausted. And in those who are not well, for heavy yogis, it is not advisable as it leads to nowhere. It, it would take a long time to achieve concentration, take a long time to overcome the Vedana itself. Also, the Vedana becomes chronic, chronic, and these are the three mothers and most of the people uh, will be doing the first two alternately. The first one is the best, but hardest. But how is okay? Another is there is the square mind, 
and the doubting mind and many other mental states that we experience. Experience. Primarily, there are two forms of mind, clear and pure mind and the impure mind. With direct observation, an impure mind can be free of desire, aversion, and delu uh, delusion. Correct observation teach purifies the mind from impurities of mind that have arisen. Whatever mind states arise, thinking, reflecting, desiring, rejecting, note it with a label and simply observe it the way it the way it is immediately. We must continue to observe the main object rising and falling of the abdomen with ardent effort so that the mind doesn't wander. If the mind wanders, become aware of the wandering immediately. Contact involves a striker, base and Ignition spark element. There are six forms of objects that can be known size, sounds, smells, taste, touch of tangible objects. Plus, and many objects striking at the base of the six receptors, the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. An object striker strikes one of the six bases. Say, for example, the eye receptor catches a sight, the striker. At first, there is a mental spark, seeing consciousness, followed by seeing contact and feelings. Seeing consciousness, seeing contact and feelings are the mental components that arise in seeing. From striking the eye base is the physical component of seeing. The same occurs in each of the other sense doors. Sounds strike the ear. Smells and pinch on the nose and when the objects strike the mind along with the relevant consciousness. The mind along with the relevant consciousness, be it hearing consciousness, mind consciousness, hearing content and mind content are followed by the arising of associated feelings. In a moment of a seeing, visible form is what is seen. The eye is the receptor and seeing consciousness, seeing content and feelings are the spark 
all these components combine with each other of CN in order to see the process of mental and physical phenomena. Our attention must follow through immediately as long as a CN occurs. When we observe CN at its inception, its inception, we can see the separate but distant rising of a mental and a physical phenomena. Later, we come to see that it is due to a visible object that is seen or cause. The eye base receives form, seeing consciousness, seeing content, and feelings arise. So, the causal relationship in sensory contact can be seen directly. To know the base element of the cis door, the striker and the spark ignition resulting in mental consciousness, mental contact and feeling, we must observe the process be it hearing, seeing, tasting immediately without delay, with effort and accurate aim in order to know the mental and physical aspects that are present. To know the mental and physical aspects that are present. The process of hearing is the same. A sound wave strikes the ear base and there is a hearing. Whether it is the sound of a rain or the wind or a speech, the sound strikes the ear base and Through hearing consciousness, hearing content and feelings, one comes to know hearing. It is possible that we observe hearing in a number of ways. Becoming aware of the ear base, where the hearing takes place or the sounds are striking the eardrum, or it can be what is known in the mind as bare hearing, or the mental content of a sound on the ear base, or the pleasant or unpleasant feelings that had arisen due to content. A fragrance may travel to the nose base, nose, nose base and smelling or cause, and a pleasant feeling might arise, or due to rotting or bad smell, an unpleasant feeling may arise. The fragrance and striking the nose receptor is the physical aspect and the smelling consciousness, smelling contact and feeling are the main components of smelling. Due to physical and main components in the striker, receptor and the spark, 
we know smiling and this can be observed by being aware of smelling as it occurs. Next one is that there is a sip flavors. Sour, astringent, bitter, salty, hot, or sweet to experience in the food that is like the tongue base. With each morsel of food, when the food mess with the saliva, one becomes aware of a number of tastes. One after the other, no one takes consciousness, content of taste on the mind. The food physically contacting the tongue and the feeling as to whether the taste is present or unpleasant. For example, and it is stage, if you don't like too many chilies in your food, is an observation of the main components of the tasting. When noting and knowing is each moment of eating, there is no opportunity for lust, raga or anger to us to arise. There is just observation and neutral feeling. In a moment of touching, there are mental and physical components. In the rising and falling of the abdomen, the air strikes the body and one experience. One experience stiffness, tension, hardness, softness, heat or cold. Physically, there is the art element, heat element, and the air element in one's experience. All actions involve a tangible object striking somewhere on the body, whether it is the rising and falling of the abdomen, sitting or walking, lying, bending, and stretching, the opening or shutting the eyelids. The tangible object that can be fed is the striker and uh, striker and strikes. Anywhere in the body when there is moisture, the element of cohesion, the element of cohesion. At the time of contact between the tangible object and body base, one knows of hardness, softness, or stiffness. This is a touch consciousness, touch content, and feeling the spark. Sparks, wonder. If one opens the eyes and stares at the something for a long time, stiffness of course. This is because water on the surface, water on the surface or of the eye dry up 
and there is a feeling of a discomfort. And a pleasant feeling arises. And an intention to close the eye and to open it follows that the base striker and the spark are occurring at the moment. In touching mental and physical aspects of prey as a pair, the object touching the body is the physical aspect and the touching consciousness, touching content and the pleasant or unpleasant feelings are the mental aspect. One develops mindfulness as a teach when one applies other effort. Mindfulness keeps the mind clean of defilement skills. And because of stitch, the mind falls or comes and collected on the object. It is clear and clean. There is no obstacle of sense desire. Occurring the clean mind comes to know it's the true nature that only mental and physical components, Nama and Rupa, are accruing as a pair. One knows by applying continuous effort to observe each arising object and due to this effort, mindfulness arises, the mind stays with the object. When the mind begins come and collect it, knowledge arises. Knowledge of non self in sensory content. With the knowledge of a mental and a physical phenomena, self view is dispersed as one realizes that a self or a creator cannot be found in a cause and effort process of mental and physical phenomena. Seeing that there is only a base, a striker and spark element in the process of sensory content, one no longer holds a view of self. One now understands that there is no solid enduring self, and with this knowledge becomes free of doubt, free of doubt. And the we see case having understood this. If one continues to practice, one is destined to develop deeper vipassana knowledge. Trying to observe the base, striker and spark element in each process of noting and knowing each time an object arises. When effort is strengthening and mindfulness gathers momentum, an interactive 
momentary concentration Kandika's body develops and becomes strong. With continued practice, it can be seen that every experience is just mental and physical phenomena related by cause and effort and bears the characteristic of impermanence, leaving no room for continued belief in itself. In each bodily bochara, mental and physical phenomena acute as a pair. In sensory context, all aspects of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking. There is a mental and a physical process, and the unfolding um, of each even can be seen as it is. This knowledge arises naturally. The knowledge gain is not what one has imagined. It is verified even direct experiential knowledge. Swakado Bhagwada Demo, it is very fine if a direct knowledge, direct experiential knowledge. Okay, this that is all today. May you gain the full benefit of a human life which is so hard to get in of meeting the Buddha's teaching, which is so rare to find. May you be well, happy, and peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.